first and foremost resuscitate the patient how are you going to resuscitate the patient give crystalloids colloids give the patient uh, you know take the history give blood transfusion if necessary do the hemoglobin level and all the investigations that i told you prior so resuscitate take a history do medical examination all of that comes in your initial resuscitation then you're going to do an initial examination with a headlight with the headlight examination, say there is an anti repistaxis where you are able to see a bleeder from the little area, directly you can control. But if you do not find any vessel, then what should you do? So if the vessel is located on the initial examination, so initial examination is done. If the blood vessel is located, then you are going to do a direct therapy with bipolar cauterization. If the blood vessel is not located, then you are going to go for endoscopy. So initially, you are just going to do a headlight examination. On headlight examination, if the vessel is located, cauterized, not located, then go for endoscopic examination. On endoscopic examination, again, if you see the blood vessel, directly you are going to cauterize it. So if you see the blood vessel, you are going to cauterize. But if the vessel is not located, then what will you do? then you are going to go for indirect therapy. What is this indirect therapy? You are going to do a anterior nasal packing. If this fails, posterior nasal packing. If this fails, then you are going to go for surgery where you are going to ligate the artery. Sometimes you may have to do a septal surgery as well. Now, despite this, if there is a continuous bleeding, then you will have to do an angiography and embolization of the bleeding vessel. Sometimes you can have bleeding from, you know, branches of the internal maxillary artery and then you, they can present to you with bleeding from the nose. So you will do an angiography to identify the source and the digital subtraction angiography and embolize the bleeding vessel. So always first headlight examination, blood vessel located, cauterize, not located, endoscopy. Endoscopy, blood vessel located, again cauterize, done. Blood vessel not located, then you go for packing, indirect measures. Packing fails, then you're going to go for surgery. Surgery is either septal surgery or cauterization. Even if this fails and continuous bleeding, then you're going to do angiography and embolization. So this sums up basically management of a patient with epistaxis. Now, if a patient comes to you, you should be able to know how you're going to deal with them based upon this algorithm. So when we come to surgical management about posterior nasal packing, ligation of the arteries, septal surgery and embolization techniques are used basically what you do is you're going to give your interventions in a sequential way so first you'll do a posterior packing wait for 24 to 48 hours after that you see if the patient is stabilized don't do anything after that remove the pack and observe again and do an endoscopic examination if things are working well good not working well then identify what is the source of bleeding so most commonly we do a spinopalatine artery ligation if that is also failing then look for septal surgery where you do a smr or you're going to do an embolization of the feeding vessel by doing an angiography so spal stands for endonasal spinopalatine artery ligation so you're going to identify the spinopalatine artery from its source so what is the source and how do we identify the first thing is identify the middle turbinate so if you see this is the inferior turbinate this is the middle turbinate. Just behind the posterior end of the middle turbinate, about 8 to 10 mm behind will be your sphenopalatine artery. So that is your first landmark that you should know from the posterior end of the middle turbinate. Now you will take a vertical incision from the posterior end of the middle turbinate going downwards. Now you will also identify that this area also correlates with the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. So this area also correlates with the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. Now you're going to elevate the mucosal flap until you feel or see this crest of bone. This crest of bone is a landmark which is called as the ethmoidal crest. Behind that you will have the sphenopalatine artery. Now once you elevate the mucosa, you will be able to see this blood vessel giving its branches. So that artery is your spinopalatine artery. You can clip it, you can cauterize it, you can ligate it with multiple techniques. Today we have coagulator, we have laser, we have radio frequency. Based upon whatever technology or technique that you have available with you, you will ligate this. So this technique is called as endoscopic spinopalatine artery ligation. So if you see here, if when we elevate the flap, we are able to see the spinopalatine artery. You can clip it, you can coagulate it, you can ligate it as per your choice. The next artery that you will ligate is the internal maxillary artery. 
Now, internal maxillary artery can be approached via the Caldwell Luck approach, also endoscopic approach. Now, when we do a Caldwell Luck approach, we are taking a sublabial incision and elevating the mucosa. Once we elevate the mucosa of the maxillary bone, the periosteum is also elevated. Now, once you see that, you make an opening in the anterior wall of the maxilla. Once you make an opening in the anterior wall of maxilla, you are seeing the maxillary sinus. Then you identify the posterior wall of the maxilla. Posterior wall of the maxilla is also open. Once you open the posterior wall of the maxilla, you will see within it the internal maxillary artery because the posterior wall of the maxilla forms the anterior boundary of the pterygopalatine fossa. This pterygopalatine fossa launches the internal maxillary artery. So anterior wall open, posterior wall open, then you find the internal maxillary artery. There you can ligate the artery. This can be done with Caldwell Luck approach. It can also be done endoscopically the same way. You will go open the maxillary sinus. Once you open the maxillary sinus, you will open the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus to identify the internal maxillary artery. Of course, this requires you to do a wide wide approach where you have to do a medial maxillectomy to get into the posterior wall. Also, you can do an endoscopic denker's approach to reach the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus without having any obstruction in or any difficulty in maneuvering when you are near the posterior wall. So, denker's approach can be done endoscopically. So, the ways to approach maxillary internal maxillary artery can be either translesal or through cardvelar. Today, most often everyone prefers to do an endoscopic technique rather than a cardvelar surgery. Now, if this also fails, then we'll have to do an external carotid artery ligation. We usually, I mean, it's never a possibility that you will think of an ICA ligation. You will always, always, always do a ECA ligation. ECA is identified in the neck. You will identify it at the level of the greater cornua of the hyoid bone. You will make an incision 2 cm below the angle of mandible and also a vertical incision at the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Now you will elevate the skin, subcutaneous tissue and the muscles to be able to find the common carotid artery. So this is your common carotid artery. This divides into two arteries, internal and external carotid artery. If you see an artery that branches, that is your external carotid artery because we know that ICA doesn't give any branches in the neck. So if you have an artery that is giving branches, then that is your external carotid artery. You can ligate it safely.